Okay, good morning. We got someone, I think one person on this morning. We're going to give people an opportunity to log on. Good morning, Pam Spang. Hope your garden's doing well. Just like to wish everyone a good morning. He honey washed there. Piva walnut. Want everyone to have a good, beautiful day. I'm sitting here in my backyard um, and for those of you who are new to our program, my name is Lynette Tubles and I'm your host for our weekly program, Food for Life, and this is our Food Sovereignty Garden Health and Wellness program that we've been doing for, you know, over a year now, probably about a year and a half. And it kind of arose out of the pandemic and uh, just the need to stay in and um, stay connected to people. You know, we've had a food sovereignty program for over 10 years now, but last year it really grew. Um, just the need for food, you know, really exposed itself through the pandemic, healthy food. And so our program, you know, doubled last year and this year it actually tripled. So we've, you know, been really busy this spring helping people put in gardens and, you know, just doing the best we can. We've, you know, we had 110 people sign up. So we provide all the support and supplies, starters, seeds, soil, um, tools, everything for our community here on the Northern Cheyenne Reservation in southeastern Montana. And so that's just a little rundown um, on our program. But I just want to thank all of you for joining us this morning. And I wanted to start out with, um, you know, our program is health and wellness also. It's all connected. Everything is connected, mind, body, spirit. And what we put into our body is really important. But also what we feed our spirit and our mind is really important as well. So I just, I wanted to start out with um, some a reading that I, I, I work really hard to read every day. And it just puts me in the right frame of mind. And um, so I wanted to start out with that. But today we're going to talk a little bit about flowers. I'm just going to show you some of the flowers that I have here and also to let our community know um, here on the Northern Cheyenne that I do have more flowers in for all of our people. So, you know, you can uh, let me know if you want to come pick some up. So we have all different types of flowers, really beautiful. So, and um, I'll just take a drink of my water here. Today I'm using my cup. If you can see, it's both the um, Oglala Lakota and the Cheyenne flags combined. So because I am both of those, um, those were gifted to us this past year on the Fort Robinson run, which is a 400 mile run we do with youth to heal from historical trauma. But we run through the <clears throat> the Pine Ridge um, Indian Reservation, the homelands of my people. And so a young girl gifted those to us and I just, I really, I really like that. So she gifted it to both me and my partner, Philip. So, okay. So the reading I'm going to read from is, and I'm gonna switch my glasses here. I'm at that point now where I have to have reading glasses, so bear with me. Okay, so this is the book that I'm gonna read from. It's called The Language of Letting Go, and I just love this book. So again, you know, health and wellness, it's all connected, mind, body, spirit, and what we've put into our minds is also really important because what we feed our minds 
become, you know, thoughts, becomes energy, and then it becomes action. And so we have to be really mindful what we read, what we watch, what we listen to, the people that we're around, you know, the ener energy um, of the people that we're around. And I always um, see something on, on Facebook. I always see people say, oh, there's just nothing but negativ negativity. And you really have to be mindful of who you have your friends with, you know, because if that's all you're seeing, then those are the people that you're friends with because those show up on your, your, um, your, uh, what is it called? Your feed, your news feed. So, okay, so today is July 3rd and it says directness. So much of our communication can reflect our need to control. We say what we think others want to hear. We try to keep others from getting angry, feeling afraid, going away, or disliking us. But our need to control traps us into feeling like victims and martyrs. Freedom is just a few words away. Those words are our truth. We can say what we need to say. We can gently but assertively speak our mind. Let go of your need to control. We do not need to be judgmental, tactless, blaming, or cruel when we speak our truths. Neither do we need to hide our light. Let go and be freely who you are. Today, I will be honest with myself and others knowing that if I, if I don't, my truth will come out some other way. Yeah, so that's a really good, good um, reading for today, you know, being direct. And I think people appreciate it when, I don't know if I really like the word direct, but I think clarity is, you know, I think people like it when you're clear, when you have clarity and you know people appreciate that um, but at the same time you know we don't want to just go around saying anything and you know there's a balance like you have to know when to step up and step back just like working with horses you know there's a time to step up when you're working with horses there's a time to step back and it's the same with people and um so I really enjoyed our meditation today. I hope, I hope you guys did too. And again, for those of you that just joined us, I'm, I'm in my backyard. You can kind of see, we sit along the tree line so you can see all of our trees and you can see, you know, my backyard. We got a little tiny house for our guests. And, but today I wanted to just, um, I wanted to keep it short too. There's a lot going on, especially in our community here. And um, my daughter is going to be roping today in the rodeo. And then um, also uh, a young man that we're connected to is going to be riding in the, the horse races today. And hopefully we can get to the powwow this evening where my grandson will be dancing. So... A lot going on I want to keep it short but I just want to um, just share some beauty with all of you and so with our program you know we give flowers out to our community as well because flowers attract the pollinators and not only that I just want to create a beautiful space that you enjoy being in because gardening is a lot of work you all know that you know and right now you should be watering your garden today it's supposed to be 104 degrees here and i know there is um, a heat wave all across this country and we've you know we're getting like two weeks of you know uh, high temperatures like above 90 100, you know 90 to 100 and today's supposed to be 104 and so we need to keep our plants hydrated and i've been watering you know, twice a day in the morning and in the evening when it cools off. And the same with our flowers, you know, so we need to 
you know, flowers are more delicate. So we need to make sure that they're hydrated. And as well as ourself, yes, Danielle, I see it says stay hydrated. So um, we want to make sure that everything is um, watered and, you know, how we nurture our plants. It teaches us a lot. You know, that's how we nurture ourselves, our families, and our, our gardens are like our family. So I'm going to uh, switch my screen over here and I'm just gonna show you some of the flowers that we have here. So let me see here. All right, so this is just one grouping of flowers that I have. So you can see these. And so I've been, I've been taking care of these flowers and so you can see there's not too many um, dead ones or the, you know, the tops that, that die, but they're, you know, like right here maybe is one. So I'm just going to gently pull those off. And what happens is it makes room for the new flowers to come. Oh, here's another one. So if you just pull those off, the dead ones, then it allows, that's called deadheading. And so it allows the others to grow in its place. So it takes off. So what happens is the plant sends the energy not to the dead ones to try to heal them, but it sends energy to new ones to grow. So this is a zinnia. It's waiting to the flowers in there. And then those are zinnias as well. So you can just see these are just, I really had um, fun putting these groupings together of flowers. So that's one set of flowers and, and these you can see I haven't been uh, taking care, I haven't. Um, so if you just see these, you know, it's, these are geraniums. So you can do the same thing with them. Just gently, you know, pull off all the dead ones. Sometimes if you just shake it a little bit, they'll come off. And then once you do that, it makes room for the new ones. See, here's the new ones coming up right there. And sometimes some of them aren't ready to come off. They want to hang on just like some of us. We want to hang on to things maybe that aren't good for us. But once we let go, it makes room for all the new energy that's coming, all the good that's coming. So there's a, a lot of lessons to be learned in gardening. And one of my nieces the other day, she, um, she also works for me. She was talking about how deadheading when she dead you know deadheading plants and flowers how you know it's she was talking about that how it's getting rid of all the old energy all the old behaviors and making room for all the new and it made me really happy to hear her say that because she's been helping take care of all the all the flowers So if they don't want to let go, I just leave them on there a little bit longer until they're ready to come off. See, there's the new ones that are coming up right there. So these are all geraniums, different colors. They're really vibrant, really beautiful colors. And then I have here these are all petunias and you can see a lot of them right here. There's a lot of, and these, they, you have to do this regularly. But once you pull them, the new ones grow back. So you can keep your plants, your flowers going all summer long by doing this. Yeah, see there's, I hope I'm not boring you guys with pictures of all the flowers, the beauty. 
I just love it. Okay, and here's some more. This one has a lot too. And right now you'll probably see with the heat, you'll probably see a lot more where you'll need to do this. And these, sometimes I'll just shake them a little bit and then they'll, they'll fall off. The dead ones, so you can see them on the ground there. Yeah, okay. So, I have these right here. And you can see, uh, this is kind of where I keep my mint. So all of this mint started out from one plant. So if you get mint, you need to put it someplace where you want it to grow. So this is all the mint that I have. And so as it gets taller and ready to harvest, I'll take, I'll, I'll cut them, you know, above the, are just below all the leaves I'll cut the bottom and then I'll dry them and then I'll put them in jars for um, for tea you know for the the winter <clears throat> okay so here's some more flowers these are marigolds and I'll show you right here they need to be so you just pop the heads off just like that and I just throw them down. So you can see the zinnias in there as well. And it's already really hot. I could just feel the heat. So these are just some beds that I put together this bed is kind of having a hard time. I think I put some flowers in here that don't. This gets direct sunlight all day long. And I put some flowers in here that don't like the direct sunlight. And so here's another example. I'll just pop those off. And see, here's all the new ones that are ready to come up. And these are all... Same with those. All right, so I'm gonna flip my camera back around. So anyway, I just wanted to show you all of those. Actually, I do have some more I was gonna show you. So you can, so those in this area, if you wanna pick up flowers, you can do that. Just message me a time because I, I'm gonna be busy this weekend too, so we can schedule a time. Okay, here's some more. And these are just going up my stairs. So they're just a lot of uh, petunias. All right. Okay, so those are my, um, those are my flowers that I have here. But now I'm gonna walk down to the garden. Oh, I also wanted to show everyone the raspberries bushes that I have. So a few years ago, we gave out raspberry bushes. And so this, this is really growing from that. I might've put another one in there as well but they're really growing. And then you can see the small one right there. And I, um, I got two blueberry plants as well. And you can see that one actually it looks like that one was mowed over. <laughs> Someone mowed that over. And here's my blueberry. And I really want these to survive, but looks like it's struggling a little bit. So, And I wanted to show you, I harvested from here. This is just out, you know, on the other side of my fence. And you can see 
the purple cone flower. See that? So these just grow abundantly here. Like we go out into our backyards and this is all around us, all the medicines that we need. And you see the sage, you know, there's a sage. There's another cone flower. And then there's yarrow. So I harvested um, some yarrow and went and picked my sage and I haven't harvested any of the purple coneflower yet, the medicine, the roots. And you can also do the leaves, the petals. And then I also harvested, you can see right there, those are uh, rose, wild rose bushes. So I did harvest, you know, some of the petals to make um, tea and then rose hips will be coming out, you know, in a while. And everything is so far advanced because you can see all the yarrow right there. Yeah. And the sage, the yarrow, just all the plants. And because of the heat, like everything is just really advanced, like it's, it's confused, you know, all the plants are almost like ready to be harvested. Usually you don't see them at this stage until, you know, late July and early August. But this year, we, um, because of the hot weather, it's just, it's really crazy. And so... I'll just show you guys a picture of some of the flowers that we have here. Okay, I hope you guys can see this because it's so bright. It's really hard for me to... We got a lot of marigolds still. So, if any of you want some more plants, please come get them. And I'm going to go into my garden here give you a quick peek how everything's going the tomatoes again the flowers last night I watered really really well I you know so I think today they should should be good so we want to be maintenancing you know not only our flowers but our garden and um, and weeding our garden you know just stay on top of that it's sometimes difficult when there's a lot going on but you want to uh, continue to do that and you can see I've been kind of on top of this one here weeding here's some that are still growing some of these are really deep root deeply rooted weeds and I think we have to be careful what we call weeds because I was just watching a post from Linda Black Elk this morning and she was talking about one of the, we call it a weed that's in our garden and we see it, but you can actually use it to cook with and it has a lot of um, nutrients for us. So the same with like in my garden here, I always find a lot of lamb's quarter. It's just growing everywhere. So when I find it, you know, if it's small enough, I'll just pick it and I'll, <laughs> I'll eat it. So we need to take care of our plants. And when we water, we want to water. Um, while some people water differently, some they will just put the sprinkler on. So what you want to do is you want to make sure the soil the soil is moist. So when you water, go down and check because it may be moist on top but the bottom may be really dry. And last night I watered these all really, really good. I, I spent a lot of time watering, but see they're already, it's, it's not too bad, but they're drying, especially boxes. Anytime you use boxes, you have to water more frequently. And then let's just check this right here. And see, this one is okay. This one is still really moist, so. 
and even in the ground, the ground will hold more, more moisture than the boxes. So you wanna check your, your boxes. And so I might have to come out and water all of these boxes. Actually, it's not too bad. It looks dry on top, but it's pretty moist down below. So it just depends when you have, um, when you have straw on it too, it really helps retain the moisture. You can see these are all beets. Those are my beets right there. And I got some golden beets over there. And these are all the peppers. So, and my garlic. So if you can see, I cut all the scapes off. I don't know if you can see that. Remember the curly Q things that were on there the last time I did my show. So I took all of those off and I've been cooking with them and they are so good. They are so good. I picked all my spinach that I had ready and I, um, I cut up some scapes and I sauteed the scapes in some butter and then I put the spinach in there and I made scrambled eggs with it. That was so good. So these are going to be, um, after I cut those off, I'm told that maybe like three weeks, they'll be ready to harvest. And the, the garlic is underneath the ground there. And so I'll be harvesting these probably about another week and a half. And these are the melons. Again, tomatoes. Those are really growing nicely. And as you can see, I got my marigolds in there and I got basil in here as well. So I have them in there. And these are cabbage, um, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, and uh, cauliflower. And I got purple cauliflower. And I had to replant some, some items and that's here in the ground. So I have them both in the box and on the ground. I had to replant a couple of items because I had something getting into my garden. So I had to replant these. This was cabbage and it was huge. You can see the leaves over there. It was huge and something was getting in here and just ate the whole, the cabbage head off. So I had to replant another one. Luckily I had it. See, this one is a lamb's quarter right here. Oh, geez. Looks like something took this out. See, I re did another one, but it was laying out. And this is actually, oh, it's not too bad. On top it's dry, but down below is good. So, and then there is all of our potatoes so with the potatoes um you know that they were flowering early you can see a flower here i'm just gonna pull that off because i don't want them flowering yet but because of the hot weather you know usually i don't see the flowering until um july like the end of july but because of the hot weather they're flowering so I just wanted to give you all a look at that and encourage you to water. Um, I'm trying to see if I have any questions here. Yeah, and see, it, you can see I have a fence all around my garden to keep the little rodents out, but also to keep the, um, we have horses here and we haven't really seen any deer. There's a lot of deer, but they don't bother my garden. Um, but the horses will, so we have a fence. And so sometimes we get gophers, they come underneath the ground. And that's kind of what, what happened, I think, with my cabbage. So if you notice, I put some, this is, um, so this is what I did. I put, uh, if you can see that butterfly, and that's solar. And those little, 
things right there. They have uh, like little bells on them. So when the wind blows, it makes noise. And uh, so since I did that, it doesn't seem like whatever it was is bothering them anymore. So just all the little tricks. And then these, uh, see the lattice back there? I, I'm going to put that up all around the garden here. I just have it on this one because I'm going to put that up so the to help keep grasshoppers out. So, um, so those are all things that I I do just to little little things hacks I guess to help with some of the pests and and. Um, rodents and animals that might want to get into your your garden so that's what i just wanted to share this morning thanks for joining me everybody i hope you enjoyed our short show and we didn't have too much new information but um i want to encourage you to join us next week because we have a guest coming on um and they're from the mha nation in North Dakota and you know they they follow a lot of the traditional teachings about gardening and about corn and they have their corn songs and when they plant their songs for their garden it's just so beautiful so I want to encourage you guys to join us next week next Saturday at 10 at the same time and um, just want to thank all of you for for tuning into Yellowbird and you know, share this on your page so other people can, can view too. Maybe someone might get some information that might be helpful to them. And so a lot of, a lot of what I share is for new gardeners because a lot of our program, right, this year we have a lot of new gardeners. And so, you know, I just want to share some tips just to help everyone and also bring on additional guests that can share more information too. So thank you all for joining us and just want to say good morning to Lance. I see you commenting. Let me see what you're <laughs> still planting like a Hidatsa. Yeah, that's good. So I um, just want to wish all of you a beautiful day. Enjoy your, your weekend and we'll see you next week. Have a great day. Bye.